on this first Sunday of Lent, the Gospel portrays Jesus out in the desert, fasting and praying for 40 days and 40 nights. And the Gospel says that while Jesus was there, Satan, the devil, came and tempted him. After his time in the desert, Jesus went back to Galilee. And the Gospel said, this is what Jesus announced. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the Gospel. As a church, as a society, we continue to be in the desert. And our beliefs are always being tested. And we ask God's grace that we be faithful and that we live always according to the gospel. As Catholics, our religious freedom right now is undergoing a test. You and I all know that. And this is so important an issue that I'd like to share some thoughts with you today from someone who is far smarter than I am, someone that I've had the privilege of knowing for lots of years. His name is Bishop William Lorry, L-O-R-I. Bishop Lorry is the bishop now of Bridgeport, Connecticut. He's also the national, champlain, the national chaplain of the Knights of Columbus. And Bishop Lorry is the chairman of the United States Bishops' Religious Freedom Committee. Bishop Lorry testified before the United States House of Representatives Committee on Oversight and Government Reform on the 16th of February, just 10 days ago. In light of the United States Health and Human Services contraception, sterilization, and abortion-inducing drugs mandate, I thought you might like to hear a very intriguing story that Bishop Lorry told as he testified before the House of Representatives. So these are Bishop Lorry's words that I'm sharing with you today. Bishop Lorry says, thank you, Mr. Chairman and distinguished members of the committee for the opportunity to testify today. And for my testimony today, I would like to tell a story. Let's call it the parable of the kosher deli. Once upon a time, a new law is proposed so that any business that serves food must also serve pork. There is a narrow exception for kosher catering halls that are attached to synagogues since they serve mostly members of that synagogue but kosher delicatessens are still subject to the pork mandate. The Orthodox Jewish community, whose members run kosher delis and many other restaurants and grocery stores besides, expresses its outrage at the new government mandate. And they are joined by others who have no problem eating pork, not just the many Jews who eat pork, but people of all faiths, because these others recognize the threat to the principle of religious liberty. They recognize as well the practical impact of the damage to that principle. They know that if the mandate stands, they might be the next ones forced, under threat of severe government sanction, to violate their most deeply held beliefs especially their unpopular beliefs. Meanwhile, those who support the mandate respond, but pork is good for you. Other supporters add, so many Jews eat pork, and those who don't should get with the times. Still others say, those Orthodox Jews are just trying to impose their beliefs on everyone else. But in our hypothetical, those arguments fail in the public debate 
because people widely recognize the following. First, although people may reasonably debate whether pork is good for you, that's not the question posed by the nationwide pork mandate. Instead, the mandate generates the question whether people who believe, even if they believe in error, that pork is not good for you, should be forced by government to serve pork within their very own institutions. In a nation committed to religious liberty and diversity, the answer, of course, is no. Second, that some or even most Jews eat pork is simply irrelevant. The fact remains that some Jews do not, and they do not out of their most deeply held religious convictions. Does the fact that large majorities in society, even large majorities within the protesting religious community, reject a particular religious belief, make it permissible for the government to weigh in on one side of that dispute? Does it allow government to punish that minority belief with its coercive power? In a nation committed to religious liberty and diversity, the answer, of course, is no. Third, the charge that the Orthodox Jews are imposing their beliefs on others has it exactly backwards. Again, the question generated by a government mandate is whether the government will impose its belief that eating pork is good on objecting Orthodox Jews. Meanwhile, there is no imposition at all on the freedom of those who want to eat pork. That is, they are subject to no government interference at all in their choice to eat pork. And pork is ubiquitous and cheap, available at the overwhelming majority of restaurants and grocery stores. Indeed, some pork producers and retailers, and even the government itself, are so eager to promote the eating of pork that they sometimes give pork away for free. In this context, the question is this. Can a customer come to a kosher deli, demand to be served a ham sandwich, and if refused, bring down severe government sanction on the deli. In a nation committed to religious liberty and diversity, the answer, of course, is no. So in our hypothetical story, because the hypothetical nation is indeed committed to religious liberty and diversity, these arguments carry the day. In response, those proposing the new law claim to hear and understand the concerns of kosher deli owners and offer them a new accommodation. You are free to call yourself a kosher deli. You are free not to place ham sandwiches on your menu. You are free not to be the person to prepare the sandwich and hand it over the counter to the customer. But we will force your meat supplier to set up a kiosk on your premises and to offer, prepare, and serve ham sandwiches to all of your customers free of charge to them. And when you get your monthly bill from your meat supplier, it will include the cost of any free ham sandwiches that your customers may accept. And you will, of course, be required to pay that bill. Some who supported the deli owners initially began to celebrate the fact that ham sandwiches didn't need to be on the menu and didn't need to be prepared or served by the deli itself. But on a closer examination, they noticed three troubling things. First, all kosher delis will still be forced to pay for the ham sandwiches. Second, many of the kosher delis meat suppliers themselves are forbidden in conscience from offering preparing or serving pork to anyone. Third, there are many kosher delis that are their own meat supplier, so the mandate to offer, prepare, and serve the ham sandwich 
still falls on them. The story has a happy ending. The government recognized that it is absurd for someone to come into a kosher deli and demand a ham sandwich. That it is beyond absurd for that private demand to be backed with the coercive power of the state. And that it is downright surreal to apply this coercive power when the customer can get the same sandwich cheaply or even free just a few doors down. The question before the United States government right now is whether the story of our own church institutions that serve the public and that are threatened by the health and human services mandate will end happily too. Will our nation continue to be one committed to religious liberty and diversity? We urge in the strongest possible terms that the answer must be yes. We urge you in the strongest possible terms to answer the same way. Thank you for your attention. And it's here that Bishop Laurie concludes. Now, I would like to invite all of you to do something very practical today. There's a letter that's addressed to our government representatives that's available in the gathering area after Mass for you to sign. I've already done so. And these letters will be hand-delivered to our representatives tomorrow. I'd also want you to know that all of the parishes in our cluster, St. Joseph, Holy Spirit, St. Raphael's, are doing this. Holy Trinity in Avon is, as a matter of fact, a lot of the parishes in our area and in our own diocese are joining together to do this very thing. I thought I would read for you what the letter is so that when you go back to the gathering after Mass, you've already thought about what you're being asked to sign on to. So here's the letter. Dear Senator Rob Portman, Senator Sherrod Brown, Representative Marcy Kaptur, Representative Dennis Kucinich, and Representative Betty Sutton. I am opposed to the Health and Human Services health care mandate that forces Catholic employers to provide medical insurance coverage for contraceptives, sterilization procedures, and abortion-inducing drugs. Our faith has long opposed these measures. I'm dismayed by and also opposed to recent accommodation announced by the administration, which sadly changes nothing. Rather, it puts Catholic employers in the impossible position of either caving in and providing insurance for items and procedures that violate our beliefs, for 90% of our Catholic employers are self-insured, or paying millions of dollars in fines. In both cases, Catholic hospitals and universities and other Catholic employers are forced out of business because they are Catholic. I believe this mandate and accommodation is a grave violation of the First Amendment of the Constitution and prevents Catholics and all other people of goodwill from practicing their religion free from government intrusion. As Cardinal Timothy Dolan, President of the United States Catholic Conference of Bishops commented, never before has the federal government forced individuals and organizations to go out into the marketplace and buy a product that violates their conscience. This shouldn't happen in a land where free exercise of religion ranks first in our Bill of Rights. As a constituent, I'm asking you, please, to co-sponsor or at least support the Respect for Rights of Conscience Act. This measure ensures that the rights of conscience of all participants in our nation's health care system will be respected. Again, I encourage you to sign a copy in the gathering area. You'll find them on the tables with the red table claws. And let us pray that the religious liberty of all Catholics, of all citizens of this great land of ours, 
will be preserved and protected. And may God continue to bless America, the land of the free and the home of the brave. Amen.